where Christ should be born. Now, that meant that old king there couldn't understand his Bible and hadn't been reading it. And he had to get them guys together that could tell him where this Messiah was going to be coming. And he got them all together and said, uh, you guys believe that's the Messiah I've been born? They said, I don't know. Uh, some of us do, some don't. He said, you tell me right now where that guy's born at. I'm going to go worship him too. Of course, he's really wanting to kill him. But he acted like he wanted to worship him. And he said he wanted to know where he was born. Now, I'd like to preach to you this morning on the subject, Why was Jesus born? Why was Jesus born? It was a dirty, stinking stable with animals around it that the Son of God lay and rested His head that day. They didn't put Him on the news and CNN wasn't around those days and they didn't put Him on the front page of USA Today and buy Him 16 years worth of diapers and a new van and uh, all of that stuff. But it was the greatest birth that's ever been in this world. You talk about a fertility drug, son. Mary didn't even have a husband or a, or a boyfriend. God overshadowed her. And baby, the Lord Jesus Christ was born into this world. I'm glad that Jesus came, ain't you? I'm glad it was to uh, the stable nearly 2,000 years ago. I'm glad that he come to the common people that hurt him gladly. Just old sinners like me and you could hear the message and get in. I want to give you briefly four reasons this morning why Jesus was born. And I want to start by saying, first of all, this morning, Jesus was born in order to fulfill the Scriptures. Now, you, you probably don't understand how important what I just said was. It is important that the Scriptures be fulfilled. Matter of fact, one time he said, the Scripture must be fulfilled. When God says something in that Bible, it has to, it will come to pass. There's no way it could miss. Jesus was born to fulfill the Scripture. Isaiah 7, 14 said, 700 years before he was born, that a virgin would conceive. Now I want to say this morning that it is fulfilling that Scripture when Christ was born in Bethlehem. Now a lot of folks have the idea today that it makes no difference. Matter of fact, I heard on the radio coming home last night, I listen to CDs, Christmas CDs. I listen to tapes that I'd heard before. I've turned on the radio trying to find some preaching. I listen to part of a ball game. I'm doing everything trying to stay awake last night. And I, and I heard on the radio that they said, uh, that somebody said the leader of the largest denomination in Canada. Did, you, did anybody hear that? On the radio last night, the largest denomination in Canada has now said that it's not important whether or not Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. It's no big deal. As long as we follow the teachings and His example that He set for us, it's not really important that you believe where He was born of a virgin. Now, I want to say it is not only important, it is essential. It is necessary. If Jesus Christ was not born of a virgin, He had a human father. If he had a human father, he had sinful blood. And if he had sinful blood, his blood did no good when it was shed on the cross. He had to be born of a virgin. His mother had to be born of a virgin. You see, Jesus Christ was not a new person created. He was a pre-existent person incarnated. Now what does that mean? That means this. That means Jesus Christ did not come into being at Bethlehem. That is not when He began. Jesus had always been with the Father as part of the Trinity of God in heaven. You say, I'm just explain that. Can't do it. But I believe it. It's a mystery. God was manifest in the flesh and came down here to this world. You believe that? Some believe it, some don't. You know, uh, yesterday... Um, one of the kids were out of school, and Corey decided she wanted to go with me on this trip. I try to take turns with them, take them on trips with me every once in a while. She decided she wanted to go with me on this trip. And I said, oh, okay, honey, get your clothes packed. She got her bags packed. Me and her left out about lunchtime on Friday, and we headed down to Florence, Marion, South Carolina. Actually, on the other side of Marion, about, about 30 miles this side of Myrtle Beach, 35, something like that. And... Uh, 
uh, I said, okay, baby, you come on, get your stuff ready, and I'll take you. And uh, so yesterday morning we got up, and I said, what do you want to do? She said, I want to go. She want to go see the beach. It's a good time of year to go to the beach. Nobody down there, and, and you know, everybody down there has got clothes on, and just a few stragglers out, and her, everything, a lot of stuff closed up. So me and her went down there yesterday morning, and we went out there, that old muddy looking place. You know, after seeing them beaches in Fort Walton last week, Myrtle uh, ain't much. Uh, uh, just a little mud hole. And boy, I'll tell you, uh, we, we went out there and walked around. I said, all right, honey, what do you want to do? There's this. There's motion theater. There's this. There's that. What do you want to do? She said, I want to go to Ripley's, believe it or not. And I said, y- you do? And she said, yeah. She said, because I like science. And I said, okay, all right, that's where we'll go. Ripley, believe it or not. So we went across the street, went in, uh, and I paid that woman $12, I think, me and her to get in there, and we went in. And what you, you've been in one of them things, I guess, a museum, where it's all this stuff of strange and unusual things. Oh, Lord, some of it, I mean, some of it you just can't hardly stand to look at. I've seen this, they showed this movie, this guy driving a nail in his nose. Big nail, big as your finger. I mean, bang, bang, bang. <laughs> like a, take a hammer and bang. Bang the nail in his nose. I saw it. This guy swallowed a ball. It is a is a is a cue ball, like a cue ball off a ping, uh, pool table. And suddenly he put it in his mouth and swallowed that thing. He swallowed a light bulb. Uh, we've seen people uh, stick big nails through their tongue. We've seen uh, all kind of weird stuff. We've seen this dude had his horn coming out back of his head. Right here. He's from China somewhere. He had a big horn sticking out like here. And you know, it always says, believe it or not, believe it or not. And it showed this woman, this shrunken head, you know, King Tut and his tomb, a whole bunch of weird stuff like that. And, uh, and you know, I got to thinking. I got to thinking. If they really want to put something unusual in there, they ought to put the, the, the birth of Jesus Christ and, and, the, and the tomb there and say, this man was dead three days and got up out of that tomb. Believe it or not. And brother, this thing is true. I tell you, the Bible said some believe and some believe not. And brother, I'm here to tell you this morning, Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. Greatest Christmas present we ever got was when Christ came to this world. His mother took that gift, wrapped it in swaddling clothes. She didn't put a bow on it, but she laid it in the manger. And that was our gift from God that first Christmas day. She asked me, I said, what do you want for Christmas, honey? Here's what she said. It's pretty good. Said, I, don't want, I don't need nothing. I don't want nothing this year. I thought, well, there ain't many kids that ain't like that. She said, all I really want is for it to snow. I said, amen. I can handle that. I said, oh, then, before we got going, she said she wanted some Nikes, high top Nikes. And she said, Daddy, let's go to the Nike store. We went, I looked all over there, all them stupid outlets. So we rode around and around and around them hunting for a Nike store. And never did find one. But we went into a place and found one like she likes and all of that. But I got to thinking about their gift. And I got to thinking about how much a pair of tennis shoes just means to a kid. Or how much a baby doll, Barbie doll. Barbie's getting, I don't know what's happening to Barbie nowadays. She's getting weird. Uh, uh, but I, I tell you what, brother, there, there's a lot of things that people think, if I could just have that. Let me tell you what the greatest gift's ever been given. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, conceived of the Holy Ghost. Not a new person created, a pre-existent person incarnated in the flesh. Did you know your blood comes from your Father? And did you know Jesus Christ had God's blood running through His veins? According to Acts chapter 20, it was God's blood in Jesus. Deuteronomy said, Moses said a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up like unto me. You know this scripture had to be fulfilled. Did you know the place of his birth was prophesied in in Micah chapter 5 and verse number 2? Did you know that? Do you know that 700 years before he was born, the prophet Micah wrote these words and he said this, Thou Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judea, yet out of thee shall come he which shall be ruler in Israel from everlasting. Micah saw the Lord's birth 700 years before it happened. Jesus was born to fulfill that scripture. You say, oh, it's just coincidence, wasn't it, preacher? Listen, why did the Old Testament say it'd be in Bethlehem? Did you know that the chances of that being guesswork just wouldn't happen? Did you know in the ancient world that there are only three continents known? Europe, Asia, and Africa? 
Asia was picked out by Micah. Did you know that Asia has many countries? Palestine was picked out by Micah. Did you know that Palestine has three districts? Judea, Galilee, and Samaria? And did you know that Judea was chosen by Micah? But did you know that Judea has many villages of which one is Bethlehem? And Micah nailed it, son. Right 700 years before he was born, Micah wrote, He will be born in Bethlehem of Judea. Not bad, huh? These sickics couldn't touch that with a 10-foot pole. With our 1900 sickic line, the sickic hotline could never get you through to one like that. They can't even tell you your name. They have to ask you. It's like, cause, excuse me, what's your name, please? Well, you're the sickic. You tell me what my name is. I'm paying for this. Tell me my name. You know my birth date, don't you? It ain't too hard for you. You know what they are? They're a bunch of fakes. These so-called psychics nowadays. I just say it like that, Tiger Beach. Uh, did you know what? They're, they're a bunch of fake. You know why they're fakes? Because they never tell you nothing bad. What was I in my past life? Oh, you were a rich princess in a palace. Yeah, right. Yeah, Sure you was. All right, why don't they ever say oh, you were a transvestite in Dallas and somebody cut your throat, you know? And, you know they won't never say that. They'll never say that because they want your money. Let me tell you something, buddy. This book here said 700 years before it happened. He said, I'm telling you, he's coming. He's coming to Bethlehem. He'll be there on time. And just at the right time, when Daniel's 69th week was fulfilled for 183 years after the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem, the baby was brought forth in Bethlehem's manger. It was a time of taxing. God had that all figured out just right. God had it all planned out for Mary to become pregnant on the right day. He knew they'd have to go to Bethlehem to pay their taxes and while they was there, the time was come that she should be delivered. I don't know if riding that donkey made it happen. I don't know if God just said now's the time. But brother, I'll tell you, somebody told me the other night, I was preaching, where was I preaching? I believe it was down in Florida. And I had everybody just tore up. I mean, I got, I was fussing and I was raising cane. And everybody was all over. And they said, man, you got some woman so tore up. She had to go to the hospital and have a baby. That's what they told me the other night in Florida. I said, Good. Hey man, that's the second time I've done that. One night we had the youth rally going on here and I was making everybody jump up, jump up, jump up, jump up. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And it happened right back there. It happened, boy, bang. She had to run out of here and go to the hospital and have a baby. That's the way Mary was. But her time was come. She was great with child. And God, in His infinite wisdom, said it in the Scripture, listen, not one jot, not one tittle will fall from this book till every single word of that thing is going to come to pass. Hallelujah! We're not talking 90%. We're not talking some amateur like Nostradamus. We're not talking some little peewee league like Gene Dixon and Edgar Casey and uh, the Sickick Hotline and, and Eric Estrada and Dion Warwick and seeing the ghost on the Queen Mary and I saw I saw a job and you're going to get a job. And you're like, yeah, yeah. We're not talking about that kind of junk. We're talking about a God that can see the future before it ever gets here and writes it down. Jesus was born to fulfill the Scripture. Hey, got news for you this morning. The rest of it that's in there is going to come to pass just like the book said. Amen. He was born to fulfill the Scripture. And then let me say second this morning quickly. He was born, number two, to reveal the Father. For years, people had wanted to know what God's like. What's God like? The only thing they'd ever heard from God were them Ten Commandments on, the, on Mount Sinai, the Old Testament law. I'm telling you, they did not know what God was like in His personality. Jesus showed up in John 14, 9 and said, He that has seen me hath seen the Father. You want to know what God's like? Read about Jesus Christ. The Bible said He was moved with compassion on the restless multitude. That's God. He was weeping over Jerusalem. That's God. He healed blind Bartimaeus after the disciples had told the man to shut up. That's God. He forgave the woman who committed adultery and told her to go and sin no more. That's God. Nobody else could do that. We saw Him there as He healed the blind and raised the dead and then died on the cross and came 
came up the third day, Jesus Christ was born to show us what God's like. People say, but God, I heard something the other day on a video. I, I got this other new UFO video. Man, these people are demon possessed. I'm going to bring some of them and show you some of these times. You talk about it's channeling. And these people are channeling these spirits. They call them these entities and higher spirit guides and all kind of stuff like that. And what they're doing, these spirits are speaking through them. And they're saying this. And this guy said, you don't have to seek God. God is everywhere. God is in everything. God is in the trees. God is in them wires. God is in that flag and these flowers and this carpet. And everything is God. You don't have to find God. You must find yourself. Help. Well, that guy should not be able uh, allowed to get out of the house by himself. He's about as nutty as a fruitcake. And I'm telling you this morning, brother, Jesus Christ come to show us what God's like. And if you want to know what God's like, read your Bible and look at Jesus Christ. God is not the God of Louis Farrakhan. God is not the God of the Buddhist. God is not the God of the false religion of the Eastern world. He's the God of the Bible and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He done it to reveal the Father. They said many, many years ago in 1775 that up in Baltimore there was this real fancy hotel and this poorly dressed farmer, it didn't look too good or smell too good, came and, and tried to get a room. The manager, it's a fancy place. The manager told him, he said, sorry, sir, we can't let you stay here. We don't have any rooms. And he just didn't want him there because he was shabbily dressed. And they found out later that it was, it was Jefferson, the vice president of the United States of America. And they wrote him a letter and said, dear Mr. Jefferson, please forgive us. They said, you're welcome to stay at our motel anytime you want to. We didn't recognize you. We didn't know it was you. And he wrote them back and he said, if you don't have room for a dirty American farmer, you don't have room for the vice president of the United States. And they missed him because he wasn't what they thought he would be. Now, all these years, people said, we want to find God. We want to know what God's like. If there's a God, why don't he show himself? A baby showed up in Bethlehem. He grew up in obscurity. He never traveled far. He didn't own a lot. Didn't even have a place to lay his head. He was crucified and buried. And people said, no, that couldn't be him. That couldn't be him. They rejected him. But God looked back and said, that was him. And if you don't have room for him, you don't have room for me. Thank God this morning. I know what God's like. He's like Jesus. You don't know what God's like? He's like Jesus Christ. He is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God. Amen? Sure he is. Somebody said many years ago, this family, his daddy had got killed in a war. They are sitting at the table one Christmas. Had a picture up on the wall. And the little boy was there at the table, and Mama said, Honey, if you could have anything you want this Christmas, what would it be? And he looked up and he said, I wish my daddy could step out of that picture and be with us. And of course that couldn't happen. But I want to tell you what happened. Guess what happened for us? He stepped right out of that picture in that Bible and come and was with us and walked among us, and we beheld His glory. God became flesh! To reveal the Father. Let me say thirdly this morning quickly. Jesus was born, number three, to defeat the devil. Nobody could defeat the devil. I preached it last Sunday night. Till he come along. He could, he did, and he would, and he did. Bible said in 1 John 3, 8, For this purpose was the Son of God manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Thank God somebody come along that could whip the devil. And because he can whip the devil, we can win through the devil through the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad we've got the victory over the devil. You know young people today are given the impression that the devil is more powerful than Jesus. You know, I got that rock thing of them, them or those demons strangling Jesus. Got the snake's body wrapped around Jesus' body. Got all that, got the sword over him, going to kill him like this. They're giving the impression that the devil is more powerful than Jesus. But I'm glad this morning that the, that the devil has been defeated and that Jesus was born to defeat the devil. Amen? We don't have to be scared of the devil no more. We respect Him and His power, but we have somebody more powerful than the devil is this morning. Hey man, I wouldn't attempt to do my job if I didn't believe that greater is He that's in me than He that's in this world. We're outnumbered big time. We are outnumbered in this world. You know, we're scared without the Lord. Sometimes we're scared when we shouldn't be. 
Remind me of something I, I talked about, Corey. Let me tell you about Chris. When she was little, she could say the funniest things. She still does. Her mind kind of just jumps like this. And she, one time, back before I got married years ago, you know, all the girls here, we was there together, and they'd fuss every night. Why do they want to come up and sleep with me? I said, no, no, y'all going to learn to sleep in your bed. Sleep in your bed. Every night, Chris would say, Daddy, can I sleep with you? And I'd, I'd, sometimes I'd give in. Sometimes I'd, I'd say, you girls are going to have to learn. Daddy's got to step and study. Daddy's got to step and make tapes. Daddy's got to step and... You've got to go to bed. No, I, one time she told her granny, and granny said, uh, she said, Chris, uh, now you should, it's not nice for you to leave little Cory down there by yourself. You go and go upstairs and sleep with Daddy. And she looked at her and she said, but Daddy's scared. <laughs> and she just think, didn't like that, man. <laughs> I mean, just one time, let me tell you what she said one time. This ain't got nothing to do with it. But one time she said this. One time, uh, mom had uh, uh, mom had her. Cr- I'll tell you that in a minute. Anyway, uh, that's so you'll listen. She said, "Daddy's scared." Now the truth was, Daddy wasn't scared. She's scared, but she wanted to get up there. And I want to tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, this morning we don't have to be scared. Amen. We don't have to be scared. We don't have to be scared. I like it. What Brother Glenn said a while ago, the only thing standing between me and the flames of hell is the blood of the old rugged cross. Son, that's good enough right there. Glory to God, that's good enough. I'm not afraid of going to hell. Amen. Amen. Jesus was born to defeat the devil. Let me say lastly this morning, number four, Jesus was born to save sinners. And I'll tell you the story about Christmas. You see, the Son of God became the Son of Man that the Son of Man might become the Son of God. Isn't that neat? The Son of God became the Son of Man so that sons of men could be sons of God. Deity took on humanity that one day humanity might take on deity. Clothed in the likeness of sinful flesh that one day we may put on the robes of righteousness. Listen, it is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world. I'm preaching on why He came. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Are you a sinner this morning? Shout about that. He came to save you, brother. He said, I'm not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. Jesus has come. What did he say in Luke 10? He said, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. I'm glad that was His mission. I'm glad he didn't come down here and say, all right, I live perfect. Now, if anybody don't live perfect, you're going to hell. Whew. Buddy, that would have been rough. He come to take away our sins. 1 John 3, 5 said, He was manifested to take sins away. You know where your sins are this morning? They're gone. And God forgot them. I was telling you about her Chris a minute ago. She said this. Mom got her some shoes or boots or something for Christmas one time and, and she's seen them. And she said, let me have them. Mom said, no, I'm going to put them up. And Chris said, let me take them, Granny. I'll, I'll hide them where I can't find them. <laughs> I said, that sounds just like something I'd say. Just like it. I said, I don't know where she got that. And I said, I do. She said, I'll hide them where I can't find them. Sure you will. <laughs> I, I, I used to say stuff like that when I was little. You know something? That's not too far off, brother. She said, I'll hide them where I can't find them. Now, we know what she's trying to do. She's just going to hide them from Granny and then later go back and get them or something like that. But you know, that ain't too far off, brother, from what God really did. You know what God did with their sins? He hid them where He can't find them. My soul! Woo! Glory to God! Hallelujah! Praise His holy name! Joy to the world! The Lord has come. Let earth receive our King. Let every heart prepare Him room and heaven and nature sing. You know what He done when He saved you? He hid your sins where He can't even find them. He said, as far as the east is from the west, hath they removed our transgressions from us. He said, in another place, He put them in the depths of the sea. And some old preacher said, God put our sins in the depths of the ocean and put up a no fishing sign so the devil can't drag them up and your family can't drag them up and your kin folks can't drag them up. They're gone. And He said, He died and came and died to save sinners. To save sinners. Amen. Amen. Oh, how the more I can't find them. Amen. You say, preacher, 
I've cussed and blasphemed God. There's a lot of people who believe that they can't never go to heaven because they cussed God one time. Let me tell you something. You know why he came to this world? Pay for that sin right there I'm talking about. You say, I'm a liar and a crook. First John 3, 5 said, He is manifested to take away them sins. You say, but Brother Danny, I've cheated and stole. First John 3, 5 said, He is manifested to take away that sin. You say, Brother Danny, I've stooped so low. I've killed a person. I've took another man's life. Can I be forgiven? First John 3, 5 said, He is manifested to take away our sins. Yes, you can be forgiven. Let me tell you something. God can forgive murder just as easy as He can forgive a slip of the tongue. We don't look at it that way. We think, boy, somebody's killed somebody. It'll be hard for God to forgive them. The blood paid for all that sin. All of it. Son, that blood just scrubs them sins away and they're gone just as clean and white. And that's why Jesus came into this world. He said, I'll blot out as a thick cloud your transgressions. He can reach you. Colonel Sanders, who made Kentucky Fried Chicken so popular, they said after he made all his money and he started getting up in years, he started trying to find peace on the inside. And they said he used to start going to church. And he went from one church to another church and tried to do good and give money and all that, and he couldn't find peace. And finally he went to a little church and explained the plan of salvation. And they said, now here's Jesus Christ came into this world and He's going to save you if you'll trust Him. And Colonel Sanders went down, they said, or talked to the preacher or somebody, and he got, gave his heart to the Lord and claimed Romans 10, 9. Romans 10, 9 said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And Colonel Sanders said, okay, I'll take that and believe it. And he said, the peace of God come over his soul. Seventy-nine years old, that old man finally found peace before he died and went to heaven. You say, boy, God had mercy on him. He sure did, buddy. God probably gave him a little special change or something. All them preachers, he's fed chicken older all these years. Maybe a dispensation of grace was given unto him. Mercy. I thought that. I thought maybe God just, I'm going to give him, I'm going to be good to that guy. He said, I knew I was a different man. Father Chaniki, Charles Chaniki was a pastor, priest actually, of a large Catholic church up north. And you know what he done? He started reading his Bible yes, and he started seeing he was wrong. Amen. And he started seeing that his religion couldn't get him to heaven. And the rosary beads and, and the twiddly beads couldn't get him there. And Mary couldn't get him there. And his good deeds couldn't get him there. And he got down on his knees one night and he read in the Bible where it said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And he got saved. Amen. And he went to church the next morning in a Catholic church with a thousand people sitting in it and stood up there and he said, Ladies and gentlemen, I've been up all night. He said, I've got peace in my soul now. He said, I've accepted the gift and I love the giver. And they said most of that congregation got under conviction and followed him and they changed that thing into a Presbyterian church and God used that man's testimony like you wouldn't believe. You know what happened? Jesus Christ came into the world to save old sinners like Father Chaniki, like Colonel Sanders, like Brother Danny, like you, like every boy and girl in this room this morning. Why was Jesus born? You see it all over the place. You see it on Christmas cards. You hear it? You're going to hear it and hear it and hear it. Why did all this happen? He was born, number one, to fulfill the Scripture. He was born, number two, that He might reveal the Father. He was born, number three, because he could defeat the devil in our lives. And number four, thank God Jesus was born to save sinners. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed this morning. They're coming to get us a song. Good news. Good news. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. I want to to ask you a question this morning. Are you saved? Are you saved? Do you know you're saved? Do you know for a fact that you are saved? 
If you don't know for a fact you're saved this morning, why don't you come get saved? We've already got folks coming to the altar. Maybe you need to come. This could be your day. Don't walk out these doors this morning till you know that you know the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you do it? Our Heavenly Father, do what ought to be done in our hearts and lives this morning. Meet with us. Meet with us, we pray. We'll love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing.